It's another beautiful morning here on the northeast coast of England and a great example as to why you should never take the weather forecast too seriously. There is a huge bank of cloud predicted to be to the south blocking all of the sunlight but as you can see it's gone much further north so I'm quite excited for the conditions we'd get this morning. Now I'm back at the same beach I was at in my last location video where I shot with my Fujifilm GFX 50R and I vowed, I vowed to come back with my Fuji GX617, which is a big panoramic film camera. Well, I've got that this morning, so I'm very excited to use it. For now, I've got to find myself composition, break out Big Bertha, and hopefully, have finally have some success with the GX617 now that it's back from the repair shop. So yeah, looking forward to it. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, the Fuji GX617 is an old film camera that shoots ginormous panoramic images. It's a landscape photographer's dream, but it's tricky to use and there is a lot that can go wrong, as I've demonstrated in the past. Today's video shows the difficulties of this camera, but it also shows what it's capable of when everything is done right. So be sure to watch until the end. So I'm currently taking my first exposure. Uh, lovely simple composition looking north, we have a really nice colour in the sky, nice candy floss pink which is a favourite of mine. Uh, I've loaded Portra 160 and uh, I was getting an exposure reading for 30 seconds, that's with my centre ND filter on at f22. But the thing with film is it fails over time, it becomes weaker and weaker. It's light gathering capabilities become less as it's exposed. So that 30 seconds is actually 1 minute 28 seconds. Um, don't think it's a bad thing, a nice long exposure. I think it's going to look beautifully soft and dreamy. But yeah, first shot with a new camera, simple, nice composition, just lovely clean sand, nice distribution of rocks and um, a couple of people having fun there in the background uh, doing star jumps and taking photographs as well. So. We're all out early and we're all having a good time. All right, there's the first shot. One minute, 28 seconds. Porsche 160. So as I mentioned earlier, the images in this video get better and better and they kind of climax towards the end. And this is the first image. I'm not happy at all with this image. I got my exposure calculation wrong somehow because this is greatly overexposed. And as a result, you can see the colors just are off. The colors here aren't right. And that's a great shame. And as well as that, the composition is, well, it's a, it's, it needs finessing, shall we say. But I do return to this composition later in the video with different film on a different day so make sure you stick around for that but yeah not bad but um yeah just to me it just doesn't look right so the scene behind me is beautiful it's clean it's crisp there's no footprints and the light is gorgeous just wait for one guy in a neon uh, running jacket just to move out of frame um, and hopefully I can get a shot without anybody in it. Uh, that's, that's kind of what I'm hoping for here. It's such a clean, beautiful scene. Oh, and a... Nice. Stop to take a photograph. <laughs> Can't complain at someone stopping to take a photograph, can I? So whilst I'm waiting for the sun to uh, penetrate the haze over the horizon and give me some directional light. I just want to say a massive thank you to a viewer of mine called Johannes, or Johannes. He sent me a focus screen for the Fuji. Basically this camera's a rangefinder, so you focus just using the dials on the lens and you compose using the viewfinder on the top. So it's difficult to get perfect accuracy. But you can get a focus screen for the back so that you can actually see the image that you're framing up and you can double check sharpness. So this is very handy. I guess the problem with it is can only use it once and then when you load film that's it until that roll of film's done so you can't put it back on whilst there's film in the camera but it's super handy and I'm, I'm very appreciative so thank you guys thank you he also sent me a fantastic book as well a little 
panoramic book, which is great for inspiration. So as I wait for the light, <laughs> more and more people are coming. Uh, luckily, they're all walking uh, out by the edge of the water. Um, I'm, I'm just so nervous that someone's going to come right through and uh, ruin this pristine... I have a fetish for pristine sand, because it's so rare on this beach. Hi. Is there any chance so that, ladies and gentlemen, is my worst nightmare. Either having to ask people to move or ask them to walk around the back of my camera so they don't leave footprints in my lovely sand. Uh, but these ladies were very, very obliging and were more than happy to walk around the back of my camera and not in front of it. So, um, yeah, let's hope I never have to do that again. Alright, so uh, <laughs> I just took the last shot on this roll of film, it was very stressful. Uh, I had to ask some people to walk around the back of the camera, which I hate doing, but they were really nice. Um, so yeah, that was fantastic. So that's the roll of film. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to load some more film and maybe think about changing my composition so I'm right on the edge looking out to sea that way. Um, not too much of an issue. And I'm going to go back down to where the rocks are so that footprints also aren't an issue and I can get out of everybody's way because I hate this. I, I, I hate being the guy that's, you know, that, that has this sort of sense of entitlement. I don't, I don't, I really don't. I think everyone should be here and I'm the problem, not people in my shot because it's not my shot. Does that make sense? Right. Anyway. <laughs> So the question we have to ask, was it worth asking those ladies to walk around the back of my camera? I have to say yes, yes it was. This image is a vast improvement on the previous photograph. The colours and the tones are so much more pleasing and there were no complications with the scanning process. The composition is better, it has more flow to it, the rocks act as stepping stones that sweep through the image towards the lighthouse. And I can't help but look at this two second exposure and think that that might have something to do with the aesthetic of the photo, because I love Kodak Portra film, and this image is a classic example as to why I love to shoot it, whereas the last image, absolute nightmare. And I can't help but think it's because this image, two seconds, the last image, 88 seconds. Now, I'm no expert, but I think I might have learned something on this photo shoot this morning. So um, let me know in the comments if you know anything about Portra and those longer exposures, because going forward, I'll know not to shoot anything more than a few seconds. But yeah, very happy with this photograph. Now I was going to load another roll of film in the hope that the light would be really nice and subdued. But now that it's up and broken through the clouds, it's all burning off, it's really harsh. Uh, it's all, yeah, so it's kind of, I think we've had the best that this, uh, this morning can offer, which means I've only shot one roll of film. And that makes me nervous, because I've not had much luck with this camera. And I know you've already seen the images, but I haven't. So, um, yeah, pretty, pretty nervous, pretty nervous. So after spending the rest of the day convincing myself that I had messed up all of those images, and to be fair, I had messed up half of them, I decided to pack my bag once again and head out the next morning. Only this time, I thought I'd just challenge myself even more by shooting a film that is notoriously difficult to use and only has four stops of dynamic range. So, as I just mentioned, uh, by way of voiceover, I am back the next morning. The light changed very quickly yesterday. It got very harsh in a short period of time. I thought I'd come back, you know, living uh, so close to this location, and it's still, like I mentioned many times, this beach feels like a new beach. So, um, we're back to try and get another panel image or two. So 
So I've just set up my first shot and I've loaded some Velvia 50, which might not have been the right choice. But I just really wanted to shoot on that high contrast slide film um, and try and get that really dramatic shot. The colours aren't happening, unfortunately. It looked like it was promising, it looked promising this morning, but now it's, uh, it's all flattened off a bit. But there's a beautiful scene in front of me. You can see where the pebbles meet this slab of rock here, so that contrast is really nice. Now, in terms of exposure, uh, my meter reading was giving me about a minute and a half uh, with a two-stop graduated filter on. Um, but then you've got to count reciprocity failure, which is the film weakening over time. And the app that I use uh, wouldn't give me a reciprocity reading for, uh, <laughs> for a minute and a half exposure. So I'm just guessing, complete guess, complete stab in the dark, zero experience, I'm going for four minutes. So here we have a four minute exposure at F22, two stop graduated filter. If this shot comes out, I'll go for a swim in that sea. Mark my words. Unfortunately, this image is overexposed by about one stop, which wouldn't normally be a problem, but when shooting Velvia 50, it is a big problem, as you can see here. The foreground is actually fine, I'm very happy with it, but the sky, man, I lost about half of the detail in the sky, and actually what you're looking at now has had a little bit of Photoshop work to try and basically fill in the blank white with a bit of gray. So I don't think I'll be going for a swim in the sea, although you know, it kind of could have been worse. So maybe I'll just go for a quick dip. Stick around till the end of the video and see if that happens. So for this next image, I don't even talk to the camera for two reasons. The first reason is that I'm shooting directly into the sunrise with Fuji Velvia 50 using a camera that I've had no luck with in the past and a graduated filter whereby I can't even see where I'm placing it within the frame. It's complete guesswork. And the second reason is that lots of people have turned out to see the sunrise and you know, I can't talk to the camera when there's people around unless I know it's gonna be a good shot. And this I was gonna convinced would be just a complete waste of film. This image for me is a step forwards and a step backwards. The step forward is that I exposed it correctly, a very difficult scene to expose for in a very challenging film on a very challenging camera. And I managed to place my three stop graduated filter without any problems and it all worked perfectly. The step backwards is that as a photograph, this isn't typically what I enjoy shooting. It's not, this doesn't quite do it for me. It's nice, it's striking, it's vibrant but it's a bit obvious and it's a bit, ah, bad and it just doesn't do it for me. But what it represents is the potential, the potential of this camera, the potential of the film, and the fact that I do feel like I'm learning and finally having a bit of success with the GX617. Now for my next photograph, I turn my camera to the north and that is where this film and this camera really shine. So no matter how hard I try and slow down and be mindful of uh, the photography that I'm doing, <laughs> it always turns into a mad rush. So I just attempted to photograph the sunrise, the actual sunrise with Velvia 50. Now, for those of you not familiar with film, imagine having a camera with the dynamic range of four at best, and then shooting a sunrise with a graduated filter when you can't even see on the screen where you're placing it. <laughs> So talk about guesswork, um, utterly ridiculous. So anyway, I took two shots of the sunrise, one at eight seconds, one at six seconds. If, uh, I think, maybe? Oh no, I can't remember. I think I've forgotten my sunrise settings. Ooh. Anyway, yeah, sunrise, I don't think that'll come out. But then I turned my attention back to the north, which is a much more manageable scene with a uh, much smaller dynamic range. And essentially I'm photographing the same composition that I shot yesterday, which was the beginning of this video. And the way the side light is catching the rocks, you know, it's gonna be interesting to see how Portra handled it and 
how Velvia handled it. Sorry guys, I really have to cut myself off here. It seems that when I'm talking to my camera and there are people within earshot, I get very quiet and very drony. So I apologize for that. But anyway, I'm taking an eight second exposure of this beautiful scene. Look at the color and the light hitting those rocks. This is gonna shine on the Velvia film. And I think this next image is my best photograph of this two day photo session. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. has now risen and people are out and about so I'm gonna go back package up my film send it off to the developers and uh, <laughs> wait in a dark room anxiously until it arrives because I'm quite confident that none of the shots in today's video will have turned out especially this morning first shot guess second shot impossible sunrise yeah this shots probably quite all right I hope um, anyway cheers guys and I will see you next time. <sighs> 45, 46, 47. <sighs> okay, so the image came out then. That's good news, I suppose. Mm -hmm. 